feathers look great. They're, they've uh, the paints dried perfectly. The they look just like the clay now. And so let's uh, add them to the uh, clay. What I'm going to do is heat up the wire so that it'll go through the uh, wax just a little easier. It'll also seal it. The wax will melt around the wire and it will uh, be held in place. Now I take it with pliers instead of holding on to the wax. That way I'll hopefully have a little more control over the uh, wire as it goes through. There we go. Ah. Trouble with using thin aluminum wire is it's thin and it's aluminum. Okay. the wire needs just to be a little tighter, I mean hotter. There we go. That's better. I wanted to go through the wax completely is because uh, at the foundry when they make the mold of this I want them to be able to take the uh, wax off and have the feathers come with it if it's partially in the clay then it's good, not going to work out I asked Michael Badhan would the end of the uh, quill be wrapped and he said no it wouldn't be wrapped so it would be just plain I've actually seen photographs of uh, Native Americans from that period where the uh, quill can be seen on the other side of the head all right, I'm taking this slow because I want to do it right. I guess the key is to get it really hot.
figure out where I want to put this feather. easily and the whole hair piece is moving on me so I'm going to put back up there Well, you'd think it'd be simple, but it's not. Of course, nothing's ever simple in sculpting. All right, I like the way that looks. The key is to make the feathers look good from every angle. In real life, that wouldn't happen. But an artist has to change real life and make an artistic statement so I kind of like the way the feathers are arranged right now and I think I'm going to leave it that way the next thing I'm going to do is cover these ends these quill ends with uh, wax and then I'll paint the uh, top of the uh, Block. But now the feathers are all in as one unit in the uh, top knot of that uh, scalp lock and uh, it'll just make it a lot easier for the foundry, that's all.
Okay, it's time to paint. Again, one of the reasons I paint the uh, wax to look like clay is to make it less confusing for the eye. I'll be taking pictures of this clay to uh, help the gallery promote the piece. Uh, and uh, we don't want a bunch of different colored areas because then the client, who our potential client that looks at it, will say, why is it different color there and there? And that's, uh, that can be confusing. The uh, fringe, the hair fringe, needs to be uh, painted again because it's, uh, it had a thin coat on before. And it's showing a little dark through the, uh, Paint. All right, that's going to be it this week. Um, I'll pick this up Monday. I won't be taking it to the foundry until probably Wednesday. I got to do business in Bozeman on Wednesday anyway, so combine the two trips. But uh, Monday I'll work on the fringe again and uh, the strap of the shield. And then the uh, scabbard on uh, Tuesday and uh, Hopefully we all ready by Wednesday when I take this to the foundry. And then I'll probably leave it to the foundry along with the, the Viking bust that I did. And uh, let's see what we can come up with as far as cost for reproducing this, which will set a price uh, for the bronze. All right, that's uh, it for this week. And I'm, I was happy to have you along. Uh, while I sculpted this thing and played with it. And I hope you're enjoying the trip. <laughs> and I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Yeah, I like that. Works good from every angle. That's, that's really the key. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.